So it was that time again, the live lounge, where you get to go on and do an acoustic version of your own song and uh, do a cover of uh, another song that you really like. So <clears throat> it's always hard with this band, you know, because we, uh, we find it hard to <laughs> decide on a cover that we all want to do at the one particular time. So, so we went into Bush Studios, a rehearsal room that we often, uh, we often use in the UK, just to more go in and, you know, set up the gear, more or less how it is on stage. Really just to see what happens. You know, that's, I think that's when the best things happen and come about, is when you're kind of least expecting them to. They just have a, a way of showing up. Do you want to, I was jamming for now. I don't think we're we'll straight away though with the, the rap. And I think do half the rap rather than the whole rap. Uh -huh. Okay, cool, yeah. So uh -huh. let a bit of music go for uh -huh. Then when we yeah, play with it. Yeah, it's better than short. Okay. Well, we were messing around in the sound check one day. I was standing on stage, I actually had my camera out, and I was there uh, recording Mark. And he started playing uh, Written in the Stars with this kind of organy sound. And it just sounded so big and, you know, so grandiose that had to be the start of the track, you know, before he came in with, uh, with that Judy guitar, you know. But uh, you know, when the whole band hears something hot like that coming on, they just, you know, there's definitely a different sense in the room, you know. You know, just that kind of the woodwork, you know. <laughs> Ben Sargent's role has uh, really stepped up, you know, in the second album he's uh, he's been playing some keyboards so we decided to say look why don't you play organ at the start of this as well, as playing bass, as if playing bass, you know, wasn't hard enough on its own, he now has a keyboard beside him, you know, taking on extra responsibilities but, uh, you know, with all great musicians I guess he's, he's well capable of doing that too. Glenn being one of the great drummers in the world, um, as soon as he sits down behind the kit, you can't help but just getting up there, and, <clears throat> you know. I mean, I know they're a percussive instrument, but he really makes them sing. You know, his hi hat work, um, quite Stuart Copelandy, but it just he takes it to another level, you know, because he's a singer as well, so he understands where to play, you know, place the tones, where to place a fill, just the tasty bits, and you know, he gets. I guess a lot more out of the drums because he looks at the drums from a musician's point of view. You know, that's his gift, you know, the understanding of the song, the true understanding of the song, and, uh, and when to play and when not to. The rest of rehearsal we just spent going through the chorus, making sure that everyone had the right lyrics, you know, right harmonies and uh, you know, because we were really vibing off the track um, before we attacked the verses. Now, the script being the script, we always like to do things a little bit <laughs> unique, so we decided to, uh, to scrap Tempest verses and write our own. Um, now, we didn't mean this in any disrespect to this at all, we just felt that, you know, that we wanted to say something as well on these verses and um, the song being what it is, you know, about, all about belief. Um, we wanted to write something that uh, that would contrast that and add a bit of melody to it and kind of just basically just script it up. You know, we've got songs like We Cry and Walk Away and we really wanted to do something like that as well and add our own little thing to it too because I don't think you can actually do a proper cover unless you try to make it your own and um, I feel we, we definitely did that. <laughs> And a part one.